In this video, we're gonna set up our database and authentication. And to do this, we're gonna use a service called Firebase. Now, Firebase is a service from Google that provides you a bunch of different services for your backend. It's fast, it's scalable, and there's a huge free tier so that you can get up and running easily. But before we set this up, this is not the only backend you can use in Flutterflow. We also have native integrations with Supabase, SQLite, or any backend service that has a REST API. But we're using Firebase. So to set this up, let's go into here, into our settings, into our Firebase tab right here. And you can either create the project right here, but I'm going to go into this little wizard hat right here because this is the original window that popped up when we created our project. And this will walk us through setting these things up. So we've got set up Firebase selected and we go to next. And here, if you've already got a Firebase project, you can just put it in here and connect it. Or you can have Flutterflow create a project for you. So so you just click on this button, that's great, select a region, and sign in with Google. This has to be tied to a Google account because this will set up a Firebase project for you that you can access after Flutterflow sets it up. And you will access that by signing in with one of your Google accounts. So select whichever Google account you want, and Flutterflow will set this up. This will take a few minutes, but you can close this window and work on other things in your app in the meantime. But let's talk about why we're doing this at all. Firebase is the umbrella service and we're really using three services inside of Firebase. First, Firestore, which is just a database, and that's what we'll use to store our data. So we're gonna have to-dos that we need to keep track of, and that's where we'll store it. Next, we're gonna use authentication, so users can have user accounts. They sign in using their email, and those tasks will be saved to their account. And finally, storage. One of the things we'll be storing is user photos for their profile page, and Firebase will provide storage for us. Okay, great, it's done. So our Firebase project is set up, and we need to enable these two other services in Firebase. So when we click on this, it'll bring us to the Firebase project that Flutterflow just set up. So let's go over there. So here's the project, and I'm in the authentication section. Now, to navigate through Firebase, you can just open up this build tab right here, and you can see all of services we're gonna use. Our authentication is right here, there's our database that we're going to use and our storage. So let's start with authentication. We just need to get started. Here's all the different methods for sign-in that you have available in Firebase. We're just going to use email and password for now and enable that and save. That's it for authentication. Now let's go over to storage and do the same thing get started. You have two options here to start in production mode or test mode. We're going to start in test mode because this will open up the rules for who can access storage for 30 days. Now, before you launch your app, you're going to want to come back in here and set the proper storage permissions, but this is fine for now. Accept the location of your cloud storage. That's fine. And it's creating our bucket. Awesome. This is all set up. We can jump back into Flutterflow. Now that those are enabled, let's come down here and auto generate some configuration files. These are files that Flutterflow will use to communicate with Firebase. Next, we want to enable authentication. This is enabling authentication in Flutterflow. And we want to create a user collection. And what is this? Well, in Firestore, remember that's the database in Firebase, it is structured by collections. Collections of documents. That's how the data is organized. And a document isn't a Word document. It's like a record in a SQL database or a row in a Google Sheet. And one of the collections we're going to have is our users collection because we need to store the data about our users. So every time a user signs up, a user document will be created and added to our user collection. And it'll store important information like their name and photo. Finally, we need to set the initial pages. And because we have authentication selected, we have this additional logged in page. If we turn this off, we wouldn't have this because there is no logging in because there's no users. So let's click these on and set the entry page. So we can just create a blank new page that we'll fill in later here. And we'll just call this login, create page. And then we need a logged in page. This is the page you want the user to go to if they are logged in. Now you have control over the navigation in your app and we'll set that up, but this will be helpful when we're testing our app because we don't want to have to keep logging in every time we make a change. So let's make another page 
and we're going to call this tasks because that's the page we want our logged in users to go to, the one that lists all of the tasks. Okay, great. This is ready to go. So let's start building. So you can see this is set up here and this is the project ID that Flutterflow created for us. And down here, we've got the permissions for our Firebase storage. And to make sure we can store our photos, let's deploy these rules. Beautiful. We also set up our authentication, which is down here. And you can see those two pages that we created are set right here. So if you want to change those, you can change them here. Next, let's go over to that database, the Firestore. So here it is. And you can see this is the list of our collections right here. Because we clicked on that create users collection, we have a users collection created right here. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to deploy our Firestore rules. And I'll tell you what those are in a second. So to get there, go into this option right here and scroll down and you can see these Firestore rules. Now, these are similar to the storage rules. These are just permissions for who can access which documents in your database. So here it'll say the collection name. We only have one collection and which permissions they have. So who has permissions to create a document, read a document, write a document. That means change or update one and delete. And when you set these, they'll be written down here and these will be deployed to Firestore. Now we're just going to leave all the defaults right now. We just want to be able to access our collections when we're testing our app. So let's just deploy them. The green is what will show you what we're adding to our rules. And so we can deploy now. Beautiful. And that's how to set up your Firebase Firestore database authentication and storage. In the next video, we'll look at understanding collections, these field and data types and how to set them up. And we'll see in that video.